Hello, welcome back to the channel. And today's video is going to be how to quickly model a full bathroom inside of SketchUp free 3D modeling software. Okay, so I've done a few videos in the past on SketchUp and how to do really basic things like create your first model, model out an accurate wall, um, but we haven't really started doing full rooms yet and talking about how to place objects within rooms and make sure you've got accurate readings and everything. Um, so what I have is one that I actually did for my house. Uh, this is a hand-drawn schematic of kind of the second floor landing. It was just a big open rectangle and we were putting a brand new full bath in there. And so um, you're going to want some idea of the type of fixtures that you want and the type of space you have available before you start creating a 3D model. So essentially I took the entire landing, um, which is basically like a 15 foot by 200 inch rectangle. Um, and I figured out how we could make a, a nice but m moderately tight bathroom inside of that space. So let's get right into it and we'll start talking about the dimensions of specific appliances as we go through it. Um, but as I think I've said in every video, when you start a 3D model, try to understand the outside space that it's fitting in so that your model can be built within those constraints. So like I said, we're 200 inches in one dimension and we're 15 feet in the other. I don't know why I don't have a, I don't have a better um, <laughs> uh, consistency. Like it's not feet and feet or inches or inches. That's just how I took it and that's how I wrote it down on here. Um, but that's from finished wall to finished wall on my second floor. And we're gonna work up against this wall and assume that the stairwell is approximately over here. I have the exact measurements. It just doesn't really matter too much because we're gonna go from inside finished walls and work our way out. Um, so let's say you have a, inside of two finished walls, you have this space. And the first thing you wanna do is pick out a tub. So I grab just a tub from the internet. Um, but a pretty standard alcove tub is 60 by 30, 60 by 32. They get a little bit wider. Um, I think in my hand-drawn one, I actually had 60 by 32. But I grabbed this one from the internet. It's 60 by 30, and we're going to go ahead and use that for the model. So uh, the reason I'm not actually putting it inside all four outside walls yet is where this wall and this wall are going to end up being is actually kind of flexible depending on where the spacing of the different appliances fits. If you have all four of the walls your bathroom needs to go into set, then I recommend you actually start with that. So you would want to put all of those walls in. So think of the whole model as whatever floor we're modeling and then create some additional constraints for your specific walls. I can kind of define the walls after I've put the appliances in. So I'm gonna start with a tub here and I'm gonna just drop in a rectangle for the outside dimensions of it. So like we talked, it was 60 inches by 30 inches outside dimensions. Um, and because I want there to still be some decent space in this hallway, I'm gonna use this dimension as the new um, line for where the front of the bathroom is gonna be. And then once I figure out how to get my toilet and my vanity in this bathroom, I'll use that as the left dimension. So a few things we have to start considering because we're going to put the toilet next to the tub is uh, code requires 15 inches from the center line of your toilet to any obstruction on the left or the right. So if I just take a point on this edge of the tub and I go 15 inches just to make sure the toilet's far enough away, I'm going to use that line that I just made as kind of a spacer. And then the next thing to note is that um, code also requires, and you need this for putting your toilet in, the water closet needs like 12 inches is the standard from the back of the wall. So wherever your water supply line is, a toilet um, and the, the actual hole for it needs to be 12 inches away because this is going to be like a three inch drain here typically, three or four inches. Um, and so that's your center line and that actually needs to be 12 inches away for standard toilets from the back wall. So uh, there we have the middle point of where our toilet can be to be um, within code acceptance. And so if the next thing we think of is our vanity, that also needs to follow that 15 inch obstruction rule. And so this is the closest that it could be. 
Um, and I know this is a 3D modeling tutorial, and so far everything we've done has been 2D, but that's how you start a 3D model. You get an idea of what it looks like flat, and then you start pulling things up. So I have a nice 60-inch double vanity that I wanted to put in this bathroom, um, and so we're going to use a outside rectangle of 22 inches by 60 inches for it. So let's go ahead and drop that in. Um, and this part's pretty easy. We'll go ahead and grab a rectangle and we'll go with 60 inches by 22 inches. Okay. And so right here, it's really starting to take shape. Um, we have the three main fixtures that have to go in to be considered a full bath. We have, this could be a shower cubicle. Um, whatever fixture you're putting in, I'm assuming you can look up the dimensions of that unit. Uh, but let's say we want it to be a real tight bathroom, not a lot of just empty space because we're this is an old townhouse and we got to work within our parameters. Um, so let's just say we stop it there and we want to plan for this to be as kind of as tight as possible. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start with a wall over here. A full wall is four and a half inches thick, a standard wall, because that's three and a half inches from a two by four. And then you have half inch drywall on either side. That's just a normal wall space. So I'm going to go ahead and make uh, this wall. I don't really care how far it is in this dimension. I guess we can do it this way. Um, I'll take it out to here where it matches up. And you can maybe see, maybe not because the screen's kind of bright, but SketchUp's really good about snapping to logical points. So there I made this, this end point and uh, it snapped to the end of the vanity and the end of the tub. And so then I'm just gonna make these two extra lines that are four and a half inches out. Uh, and we're gonna draw in the wall dimensionally accurate. So this is actually how thick the wall's gonna be. Since the next video, the next piece of this is going to be, I'm going to put a laundry little nook over here. I do want this to be accurate within at least an inch or two um, so that I can make sure there's room for all my appliances. Okay, so the next thing is we've just shown where the hole is going to go and where the center point of the toilet is. But let's go ahead and actually draw the footprint of the toilet. I grabbed a standard one from the internet. Again, you see if you just type in toilet dimensions, you get guys pooping and everything. Um, but you can grab whatever specific fixtures you're looking for. 18 and a half inches by 27 inches is a fairly standard footprint. So let's go ahead and grab that. What did I say? 27 by 18 and a half. And same deal. Let's just go back here and let's make a rectangle of it. So uh, 18 and a half by 17 by 27. So from the center line, 18 and a half divided by two is nine and a quarter. We're going to go nine and a quarter to each side. Let me see here. That should be here. And then it's 27 inches deep. And then we'll go the full 18 and a half back. And, you know, it's not currently a rounded fixture, but that's because for 3D modeling, um, you want to quickly get an idea of the space just to make sure everything works. And then you can start putting in as many details as you want. So you can pretty it up as long as you want. Um, I'm not gonna concern myself too much at this point with the finer details because we wanna make sure the space actually works for it. So let's start making this three dimensional. We have a pretty solid fo footprint of what it's gonna look like. Let's go ahead and look at our toilet. It comes up about 30 inches and you can see, I'm just gonna estimate like it's 60% uh, three-fourths of it is only going to come up about half that height so let's grab this toilet let's say the first half it all comes up 15 inches and let's just throw a line across here at what is this 27 inches long let's um let's say the back seven inches is all just water closet okay and i'm going to make a new line there and i'm going to bring that the other 15 inches up and so what you'll see right away, this isn't rounded. We haven't put a seat on it or anything, but that is clearly a toilet or a chair of some kind. And that's good enough for getting a rough estimate in and we'll start putting the finer details in after. But now let's go with our tub. So if we go back to it, it's uh, 14 and a half, 14 and a quarter inches off of the ground. So we'll grab the whole thing and we'll go 14.25 off the ground. And let's look at our vanity and it's 35 and a half inches high. So we'll come back here, grab our whole vanity, and we'll go 35.5 off the ground. So if what you're trying to do 
is get a feel for the space and make sure that your fixtures are going to fit in here. The last thing I would recommend doing, grab your outside wall, bring it up nine feet. You might have to do it in a few pieces because it's going to hit every potential obstruction. Um, but you want it to come up nine feet high and then you could either put a door in. So we'll do that real quick. We'll put a door in or you could just punch this wall out, make it invisible. And then at least you're looking into the space. Um, so you could even punch this wall out. And now it's like you're in a room. You can see where the floor would begin and you'd walk in. Um, but it's good practice as well. Let's go ahead and say we're putting a standard size interior door in here. So I'm going to do it centered on the sink. So I grabbed the midpoint of the vanity. I ran it out to here. And then I'm going to go in here and I'm going to say we have a 32 inch door. Go uh, sort of frame in the door here, if you will. And I'm going to say it's a standard 32 inch by 80 inch doorway. So I'm going to go ahead and close those walls back up. But then I'm going to give us a door to look into the room from. So delete that. And then to close a space up, I talked about this in the past videos, just redraw one of the lines from the space you deleted and it'll automatically recreate that wall. And we're actually gonna delete this one again because uh, first I wanna make this and I wanna make it 80 inches high. And then I wanna close the wall up and then we'll punch out the door. Okay, so here it's nice, we can go through here and now we have a doorway we can also come up um, from any side from the back side and look at it as well so that looks pretty good let's go ahead and drop in this wall and now we're going to start doing the things that are going to make it actually feel like a bathroom we're going to check some clearances that you should always check uh, so for starters we'll take this um, and we'll make sure that like a door 32 inch door could sweep open I always like to show this on my models to show that there's door clearances for someone to walk into it. Um, let's go ahead and put the actual uh, indentation into the tub to show like how um, how and where it's going to sit. So I think if we go back to the tub, yeah, there's a 55 by 23 point, we'll just say 23.4 indent in it. And again, unless you're like sending this to a builder and saying like, hey, you shouldn't have to make any other plans because now, um, you know, your work is done. You can pretty much center it on the middle and uh, that's going to get you something that's very accurate if you're just trying to get a feel for the space. So we'll say centered on the middle, we want to make something that's 55 by 23.4. Um, so let's go back to our model and we'll go half of 55 is 27.5. That's fast math. Uh, and then we'll come across and we'll say half of 23.4 is going to be 16.7. Uh, yeah, that looks about right. Nope, that looks completely wrong. Uh, half of 24 is half of 23.4 is going to be 11.7 yeah guess who's an engineer okay so these are our outside dimensions we're going to start um, making our rectangle for the indent using those and now that we have a, a corner to go from we can just do the whole 50 for that one's 23.4 um, and then we're going to come down here full 55 so I recommend, especially if you want to like go over this model with a spouse or a business partner, whoever you're trying to plan this space with, um, the more you can make it look like the finished product, the easier to talk about it's going to be. So I do recommend you go through at the end of your model and um, do some of these cleanups, some of these added features to just give yourself a better overall looking product. And let's see, it's nine inches deep. So we'll do 9.25, just like it said. All right, and probably the last thing I'll do in this model before we start adding some texture is I'll just uh, model a quick double sink. So um, grab the midpoint here, I'll go to there, put the midpoint here, and then I'll go to the midpoint of each of these. Yeah, there we go. And I'm just gonna say six inch radius sink. That's not probably what it actually is, but that's close enough for rock and roll. Um, and we're just going to punch those down like four inches to make it clear that they're sinks. 
and then we're going to start adding textures which is kind of the really rewarding part of 3d modeling it's where it goes from like lego blocks to um, clearly like a impressive model that shows exactly what's going on so four inches and I think that's pretty sweet let's go ahead and just um, let's go ahead and make an enclosed room so we can put like a, a mirror in there um, interesting that didn't go nine feet off the ground Mm -hmm. so we want it to be nine feet maybe it did and I could have raised the other walls too high but okay all right so I am gonna get rid of the walls around the door for adding texture because I'd like greater visibility into this space um, let's go ahead and say I'm not gonna spend too much time worrying about the finer details of it but let's say we put a big old round mirror on here that'll look pretty sweet and let's start making it look a little bit prettier a little bit more like something where you're actually visualizing the space let's say you've picked so colors uh, if you go to the right and you look at the little it's like checkerboard the tab is called materials if you have a general idea what kind of color you want to paint the bathroom um, you can just grab it in here let's say you go with a lavender that's pretty bad actually that looks terrible um, unless you're planning on painting your bathroom that color in which case I like it a lot um, so you can grab that color you can put it on the walls uh, there's a whole section for glass and mirror so you can actually put like a mirror type texture um, on your mirror and it doesn't I mean there are a lot of aftermarket like add-ins you can do for SketchUp that look a lot more realistic the stuff they give you for free is just the stuff to get you started but still it looks good enough to get you going um, and then they even have some tile sections so it'd be very common to put tile in the uh, floor of your bathroom you can go ahead and model that as well and I think that looks pretty sharp um, say you had a different kind of tile in mind for your countertop you can do that they have a lot of options so uh, of course cabinets probably are gonna be wood so you could put a, a finish of wood on your cabinet um, that looks okay this kind of looks like a nightmare 1970s bathroom but um, in general you can see like the finishings you can play around with these take a look at everything they have if you have a window you just punch another hole through like we did with the door you could put things like cabinet doors door handles you could round all these edges it's totally up to you from here um, I recommend you would save your model at this point um, or even save off a copy so you can start playing around with the details but you've got this shell this essence of the basics to work with um, and in general this is how anyone like you don't need any formal training you don't need any license you don't need any special background or anything like that and you can completely model an entire room of your house including like fixtures with just a little quick googling and a little bit of time and patience on this free online tool so I hope you found it useful. If you did, please like the video, subscribe to the channel. It helps me out a ton. And if there's something specific you'd like to see in a future video, just let me know about in the comments below. I'll do my best to get back to you as soon as possible. If you have any questions on what you saw here, just ask them in the comments as well. I check those fairly regularly. And as always, good luck with your models and thanks for watching. Thanks. Bye.